Okay, today I'm going to teach you guys how to take someone's blood pressure. Uh, this is your blood pressure cuff. Inside of it is a bladder that fills with air. This is your sphygma manometer. And this particular device, it measures your blood pressure in even numbers, okay? When I take the bulb and I start to pump it up, you'll hear it in your stethoscope. When I slowly start to release this, you'll hear it hiss. You don't do it really fast, you do it very slowly. And at the same time, you're listening for the heartbeat. Now, these, this is your stethoscope, and these ear parts, I saw you guys putting them in earlier the wrong way. Your ear canal actually goes forward. So these need to go forward in your ears like this, okay? Now, the other thing is you have to be careful. No playing around with this going like that while somebody has it in their ear. You can rupture someone's eardrum, okay? The other thing is once I take her blood pressure, if I mess up and I'm like, oh, I'll let it go too quick, I have to wait one minute before I can take it again, okay? If I mess it up again, then I need to wait another minute. Three chances is all you get, and then you have to switch arms, okay? Because you can actually hurt somebody doing this. So, let me show you how to properly put it on. Before I put the um, cuff on, I need to find her brachial artery. This is the break of her arm, and I'm gonna feel with two fingers where her brachial pulse is. Okay, and it's right there, really strong. Never feel with your thumb because you have a strong pulse in your thumb. So you're just gonna hold it, find it, and then when I go to put the blood pressure cuff on, you see it says artery, okay? So you line it up and you put it on, but not too tight and not where it can wiggle around. You just want it to fit kind of like a pair of yoga pants, okay, where you feel secure. Then I'm going to hold her arm like this so that she's comfortable, okay? I also want to be able to see this, so uh, I might have you hold this for me right there. Okay, so I'm gonna put my stethoscope together. I'm gonna hold this in place. Righty tighty. Are you comfortable? Yeah, I'm doing. Okay, now how did that feel? It was fine. That's fine? Good. Okay. So what I heard was when this dial went <laughs> bump, I heard that first bump at about 110, okay? 110. And then as it went, it went bump, 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 bump. As soon as you hear that last strong bump, that is your lower number, okay? So you have your systolic number and your diastolic number. And I'm gonna um, come over here on the board and go over that. Thank you, sweetie. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's go over the blood pressure. Um, this will be on your certification that you're gonna be taking. Um, you have the sphygma manometer and start here at zero, and then it goes up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And you go in these increments, and then it goes by twos. 
two, four, six, eight, ten, and then that's going to be a more bold, prominent line. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Two, four, six, eight, ten, and so forth. So when you count this, um, it's going to go two, four, six, eight, ten. And so, um, like we talked about before, pumping it up, and then it's watching that needle go from zero to, we'll say, 140. And then it comes down. So if 100 is right here, then you would have 100 and 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 2, 4, 6, 8, 120. So you would have it like that. If it stops here and you hear your first bump, then your blood pressure would be 112 over, and then it keeps coming down. Boom, 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 boom. Right here. And let's say it stopped at 84. Okay? So this is your systolic and this is your diastolic. Okay? Now, the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80. But this is your patient's actual blood pressure. Is this too high or too low? Okay. Okay. So before I had kids, my typical blood pressure was 90 over 60, which is low. Okay. Um, in order to know whether or not this is okay, you would have to know the range. So between 100 and 140 would be the top range. So, does this fall between 100 and 140? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's fine. This number, the range would be 60 to 90. Does that fall in there? Okay. Now, what happens if your patient is That's not good. That's not good. Okay, so that's too high. So, on the test, they might ask you which number is the systolic number? The top bottom or the uh, the top one or the bottom one? Okay? Now, here's kind of what students in the past have said is a tricky question. They'll ask you, what is the range of a blood pressure? Okay? Now, one of the answers is always 120 over 80, but that's not a range. So people get really confident, they're like, ooh, 120 over 80, and they circle it or they hit the button and it's wrong. So make sure um, the most common blood pressure would be 120 over 80. The normal range is between 100, 140, 60 to 90. Any questions about that? Okay, so we've done the hands-on part. Now we're gonna go over um, TPR, temperature, pulse, respiration, okay? Um, Neff, do you want to come back up here and I'll use you as an example? All right. All right. So we have what we call the three minute check. Okay? No, no, go ahead. Just have a seat. So you have your temperature, pulse, respiration.
okay? So in the last couple of years, you've noticed things have changed at your dental office, your pediatric office, your primary care physician's office. Some of them still have where you have to sit outside in your car and text that you're there. And then they'll send you a questionnaire in the last 30 days, have you had a fever? Have you been around anybody with a fever? Um, have you been exposed to COVID? Have you experienced any symptoms of COVID? Okay, so once I bring my patient back, I'm gonna check their temperature, pulse, and respiration. Can I do that in one minute? You shouldn't be able to. Shouldn't be able to? No. Well, yeah, I think you should. All right, well, let's see. I don't think so. That's not a good examination if you're taking less than a minute. I mean, if you're a skilled nurse, you probably wouldn't. I don't think that's normal. <laughs> I wouldn't feel safe. All right, well, let's see. Okay, so um, let me know um, when I point to you when a minute's up, okay? So, I come up to my patient, how are you doing today? Good, and you ma'am? Good. So, temperature, pulse, respiration, those three things in one minute. So I come up and say, I'm just gonna check your pulse, okay? So, this is your radial pulse, radial wrist. When I check it, if I don't feel anything, if you have your patient bend slightly, then it pushes it towards the top of the skin where now I can feel it, okay? So I come up, I place a thermometer in her mouth. Let me know when a uh, minute's up. All right, so did I get her temperature? Yeah. Yes. Temperature was 98.6. How about her pulse? What did I get? A minute. I don't know, you didn't tell us. I got 32. Or, you, or you're counting. And oh. then her respirations. At 30 seconds, I literally stopped counting her pulse and watched her breathing. Now, multiply it by two, and it was 64 and 12. Temperature, pulse, respiration in one minute. Does that sound sketchy? Yeah. It's not. But it does. <laughs> and then after that, I'm gonna take her blood pressure and I have her temperature, pulse, respiration, and blood pressure, which earlier it was what? One, 110 over like 82? Uh, I don't know, you never told me. <laughs> okay, so there you go. Yes. Is, what a great blood pressure. What is like, are you gonna actually have to do this in like, Dental office or no, it's just like a so in a dental office, a lot of a lot of offices have the electronic stuff where you just you know yeah. uh, put that little pulse ox on the finger and it tells you a lot of information. But I still like to teach you this way because electronics break. My okay? is old school. She does sometimes that. we'll have power outages. Um, you need to know how to do it manually. Okay, so we have the blood pressure temperature, pulse, respiration, and just to review, when we're doing CPR, we do the carotid pulse, right? And we get that from um, the carotid artery, which is where they get the word carotid chop. You hit that hard enough and disrupt the blood flow, people can think, okay? And then you have the brachial artery, the break of the arm, and then the wrist, radial, and this is some of the stuff I'm gonna be quizzing you on. So what okay. is this one? Carotid. Carotid. Okay. Yeah. And we'll go over it again when I uh, CPR certify you guys. And then the blood pressure, you have the sphygmomanometer, you have the cuff, and inside of that, do you remember what I said was in there that fills with air? What? For oh, the cup? I forgot to say, but it's air. The bladder. Yes. And then you have the actual pump. Okay. Any questions? No? All right.